This is a GCSE explainer for global atmospheric circulation. So we're just going to have a think about this first. So um, the, the whole circulation of the atmosphere is due to the fact that uh, we've got a big difference in temperature between um, our equatorial regions and the and the poles. So you've got a rotating Earth there, um, obviously not, not at the correct speed. Um, I've marked on the approximate position of the equator, and the approximate position of the of the two um, Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle. Okay, so uh, those are those are quite significant. Now you've got your South Pole and your North Pole. Um, the equatorial regions um, are, are really uh, warm because the the sun's energy hits the equatorial regions flat on. Okay, it passes through le less atmosphere, so there's less backscatter, and it hits flat on, so it's got less surface area to heat for the amount of energy that there that there is. Okay, so the sun's energy is concentrated in equatorial regions. The further north we go and south we go, as you can see there. The curve of the Earth means that the same amount of solar radiation has more land to cover. That means that the energy is less concentrated. For so, for us here in the United Kingdom, um, you know, the the sun's energy is very spread out. Okay, um, and in fact, actually, um, you know, technically, without the movement of the um, of the atmosphere and the oceans distributing heat. Um, to, to our regions in, in the United Kingdom, we'd lose more heat than we actually gain from the sun across a year, okay, which would not be in a, a good position to be in. It's particularly actually worse than that because the Earth's not flat to the sun. It's not uh, flat to the sun. It's actually at an angle of 23 and a half degrees um, relative to the sun. So that actually uh, makes matters worse. Uh, and in uh, winter, um, you know, the, the, the North areas north of the Arctic Circle won't get any sunlight at all. And similarly, um, on the summer solstice, the 20, 21st to 22nd of June, uh, the, the southern areas will get no sun, whereas the northern areas north of the Arctic Circle will get 24 hours of, of, of daylight. Okay, now all of that sets up um, this model of atmospheric circulation, where uh, most insulation arrives between the two tropics. And that causes air to rise up through the atmosphere in thermals at something called the intertropical convergence zone. That gives us huge cumulonimbus clouds. So we've got a big rain belt there between the two tropics. And um, we've got lots of tropical storms there, which comes in with your, your hurricanes. But as that uh, air hits the top of the troposphere, it migrates north and it migrates south and it cools down as it, as it does that, as it moves away from the equator. And then that air sinks back down and travels back to the equator um, as what are known as the trade winds. OK, um, we've got two more cells located either side of that. So that you've got a cold polar cell. OK, up here in the north, which drags cold air southwards. Um, we've got warm air going on the on the upper leg of that. And then in between the two, you've got the feral cell. Um, between the polar cell and the Hadley cell, and that's set up because of differences in in pressure. Okay, so in terms of the lesson, uh, well, actually, just one last thing on that. That's that's what distributes heat from these equatorial regions and colder air from the the northern areas and the southern pole areas uh, back towards the equator. Um, there's also a system of ocean currents that does the same as well. You might have heard of the, uh, the North Atlantic Drift or the Gulf Stream, which brings warm ocean water across from the Caribbean to the United Kingdom. OK, and they re redistribute heat. So in terms of your lesson, you've got two videos to watch, which explain both of those processes probably better than me. Um, and you've got the uh, some questions to answer on those. Why are all the Earth's deserts on a similar okay. latitude? And then you've got a diagram to fill in for the atmospheric circulation in the boxes. And I've muddled up the labels for you to put in. OK. And then there's a little demonstrate activity. So you can see here you've got the model of atmospheric circulation. And I've kept the lines of latitude the same on this map of the world's uh, vegetation cover. So you can see where the air is sinking and we've got high pressure. Uh, that's where we get a lot of the world's deserts. Uh, where the air is rising and we've got low pressure, 
Um, that's where we get a lot, you know, on this equatorial region, we've got a lot of tropical forests. Uh, where we live up here in, in the United Kingdom, the air is rising, um, so we are a reasonably humid area, so we've got deciduous forests. Um, we've got low low pressure there as well. Okay, um, so we'll just um, finish there. Um, thanks for listening.